And in Revelation 3, chapter, verse, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, you, you're familiar to these, with these words, no doubt. Go back to 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That is a rather descriptive saying, isn't it? But you get, we, we, we can't miss the point there. What are you, fish or fowl? What are you, Christian or pretender? What are you? Be a Christian or don't be a Christian. Remember what Elijah said to the the double-minded Israelites on Mount Carmel? How long will you vacillate between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. You can't sit on the fence. You're either a single-minded or a double-minded man or woman. And James describes these two people who are in the church. He's writing to a church, remember. The single-minded and the double-minded. The single-minded is a, a man or a woman who has made a conscious decision to put God first in their lives because they know that they are not capable of living their lives in this world without him, and without godly wisdom. They know that in order to live as God would have them live, they need wisdom from above. They are honest and humble enough to admit it and bold enough to ask God for it because they believe that God will give it to them. They know the truth of God's word, which is spoken of by Paul in his letter to Rome. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The single-minded man looks at that verse and says, yes, God has given me Jesus, and he will give me all that I need as well. The double-minded man or woman is not sure about that. They say they believe that God gave Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins, but in practice, they deny the reality of it. How? Because they do not really believe that God will give them everything else that they need for a godly life. And the proof is that they rarely ask him to do so. And when they do ask, they ask without conviction. To say that you believe, on the one hand, that God has given you the most precious gift that he could possibly give you, the indescribable gift for your salvation, and then not to trust him to give you everything else, which collectively is of infinitely less value than what he's already given you, is to be a double-minded person. To say, I believe that God has given Jesus Christ for my salvation, and then not to follow God obediently and seek his will for your life obediently, joyfully, gladly, is to be a double-minded person. It is not to have a center, not to have conviction, and to be wafted about by every wind that comes along. 